So Manny, tell me one positive or surprising thing you've experienced here so far. I gotta say one of the most surprising things is how clean like your country is. You know, I, I'm, I'm a Jersey boy. I'm, I live next to New York in America and like people say New York is, I guess, one of the greatest cities in America. But when you walk through New York, it's very like disgusting through trash. We don't really take care of our, our city and it's very sad, but this, this country, oh my God, it's so clean. I see everybody being respectful to nature and it's just amazing. Tell us a little bit about your background. I know you have three passports and I think people have questions. <laughs> oh man, um, so I was born and raised in New Jersey. Uh, the only reason why I have a Spanish passport, I got it when I was about 12 years old through my father's side, because he's from Spain. And growing up, many summers I spent with my family in Spain. Then about when I turned, I want to say about like 18, 19, that's when I went with my mother to go get my Chilean passport so I could start playing for like the national team for Chile. Because as an American, you see all the, you know, talents that is coming out of America. And it's like difficult to get in there unless you're like a crazy superstar. So I decided to go through the Chilean route as a national team player. So your mom's from Chile, your dad's from Spain, but you were born and raised in Jersey. Yes, my parents came to America very young. At what age did you start playing basketball? I started playing basketball around probably like 10 or 11. I played soccer first majority of my childhood because growing up, till, I mean, till this day, my father's 65 and he still plays soccer. Like growing up, he's like, he's been my idol. You know, I was not just like a, an athlete, but like a hardworking man. So like when I was younger, obviously your father is your, I mean, your father's your role model kind of thing. So I've always loved playing soccer. But how and when did you decide you wanted to become a professional athlete? I decided I want to become professional probably my freshman year of high school um, because I, decide, um, I started hitting my growth spurts. And I, you know, because with my height and like developing my talent, I saw, I, saw, I saw myself kind of dividing myself like better than other of my classmates. And, you know, I, decide, I, I realized that I could probably make this profession. Did you have any teachers as role models or anybody telling you that you should do that? Oh, man. Yeah. Funny story about my childhood, actually. When I was younger, before I played soccer, I, I mean, before I played basketball, I was also a skateboarder. I used to skate on a board. And I had this one, oof, I'll never forget it. He was about two meter five a hundred and like 20 kilos, big Jamaican guy, stops me in the middle of the street and he's like, listen, this is my number. You tell your parents to call me. His name is Coach Ozzy. And ever since then, he's been not just a mentor, but like a great inspiration as well through the basketball aspect. He showed me how it, how like to live, breathe this sport and how this could open so many doors. Are you still in touch? Oh, till this day, he was, he went to my wedding when I got married. He texted me the other day, like, that's just, he's not even a coach anymore. He's just pure love. This is great. That's a great story. What's the sports event you'd most like to participate in if you could like fantasize? Oh, uh, sports event. Um, I really, I mean, I really don't have a sports event that I really want to participate in just because I'm more of a appreciate the time now and just go with the flow kind of guy. Um, so right now watching the World Cup or thinking that the Olympics are next year, you don't dream like, oh, we should get play there? No. Not really? No. I mean, what I, what, I dream, what I dream the most, honestly, is just to continue being able to give the opportunities to my family, to my wife, to, you know, to them to be able to come and see the world the way I see it. You know, as people travel, People understand that the most expensive expense or the most thing you pay for is like hotel, food, you know, either you have to rent a vehicle and stuff like that. But like because of the opportunity I have, you know, they could come, they could come to use my apartment, sleep on the couch or like, get, you know, get a, an arable bed. So that cuts down a lot of expenses and it helps them, you know, see the beautiful cultures. What do you like most about being a pro athlete? Oh, just 
traveling, traveling, meeting new people, seeing the different cultures. Like, I love different cultures. People live differently than America, you know? I've said it a lot, like America, people, you know, work to live, and then over here in Europe, people like, I'm sorry, I apologize. Here, here people work to live, but in America, they live to work. So over here, when you guys work, but you guys understand how to appreciate life. In America, the expense is so much that, that it's just people don't understand how to properly live. It's just work, 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 and not, that's it. That is interesting. You have this perception of, of Europe or Estonia. I think you have to stay here a little longer, <laughs> a little longer to see what it's actually like. Tell us a little bit about your education as well. Uh, my education. So uh, I got my undergrad in sports management because, you know, I want to be able to be a sports developer, you know, develop the youth because I feel like it's always about giving back to the community. Um, I'm also a nutritionist to help, you know, help people improve their, the way their eating habits is. And plus, I also combine it with health and wellness. So that kind of gives me the ability to work with like elderly that suffer from like chronic illnesses like diabetes, depression, anxiety, and all that stuff, and be able to adjust their lifestyle to have a better lifestyle. I know you're a fan of cooking. What's your go-to meal and how would you prepare it? Oh man, my go-to meal, it would probably either be, so I say chicken cutlets, but over here, you guys have a different name. It's like breaded chicken. So the way I would prepare it's, you know, you add, you have a few plates, you have a plate full of flour, a plate of eggs, a plate of breadcrumbs, and then an extra plate to finish the finishing touches. And then how would you do it? You, you know, you get chicken breast, you would cut them in sim sim uh, small slices, pat them down so it's nice and flat, and then you would put it in the flour. Once, the, once you're done coating it with the flour, you put it in eggs, eggs you put it in breadcrumb, and then once you're ready on the pan, you get a hot pan. Make sure it's hot. Don't wait till it heats up, make sure it's hot. Then you put a, just a little bit of oil. You don't, need, you don't need tons because oil is actually not that good for you. You put a little bit of oil, once you put the chicken on it, you let it, you let it season, I mean, you let it like kind of cook for a little bit and then you add a little bit of butter so it doesn't really like dry up. Then once that comes, you wait till the, the chicken's about golden brown, dark brown, and then you flip it over. And then once it's done, you'll have a really, and it's great for leftovers. Yeah, I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> what are your other hobbies besides sports? Um, other hobbies, I'm a huge gamer. I play a lot of Call of Duty with my friends. It's a really great way to stay connected with my friends. But besides that, I love playing chess. And I like to continue trying to educate myself. I feel like education is key, especially like basketball is not a forever sport. So I feel like when you work your mind and you continue educating yourself, you really, you know, advance. So I've been trying to read a lot of like financial books or how to like self mentor kind of thing to improve myself to be a better person you've been here for a couple of weeks now so you've met the guys you met the team who would you challenge from the team in a game of chess against you oh man it'd be lemon i'm not gonna lie um so far me and him has been getting closer and closer we've uh we've actually hung out off the court a few times and he's honestly a really great person and i'm excited to see if i could play him in chess and see if i can win yeah, I think Lamet said he plays every day. Yeah. That will be interesting. We have to make some kind of video out of that as well. <laughs> What's your three travel essentials during like game trips, not including the basketball Stuff. equipment? Okay, my great essential is a Normatec. It's for my leg recovery. So after a long trip, you know, it's good for blood flow. Then, I, you know, I have to have a book for myself to read a little bit and then also, probably like a little portable gaming system. I mean, like I said, I'm a huge gamer, so I play anything. Crash Bandicoot, Mario. What's your all-time fantasy starting five? Oof, my all-time fa uh, fantasy. It would be Allen Iverson as a point guard. Then it'd either between two or three would be Michael and Kobe. My fourth would be Pippen, Scottie Pippen. But 
I would obviously change that as well because, depending on the day, because I'm a huge Larry Bird fan as well. I love Larry Bird. And then the, the big starting five, or the big five is Shaquille O'Neal. He's just dominant. You cannot change him. What are you most excited about visiting here? Oh man, it's gotta be the Christmas market. I've heard nothing but just amazing thing about the Christmas market. Besides being cold here, the Christmas, mar the Christmas market is actually legendary in Europe. I've heard about it in other countries and all that stuff. You've heard about the Christmas market of Tallinn while living in other yes. countries? Yes, I've heard, I've heard it when I was in Hungary because Hungary has a really nice Christmas market in Budapest. But when I was speaking to a local there, they actually visited Tallinn for the Christmas market and they kind of said that it was way better, or not way better, but it's more cultural, it's more historical kind of thing. And that is something that I'm excited for. Plus, I'm a huge Christmas guy, I love Christmas. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Oh my God. It's kind of weird. It's like Nightmare Before Christmas. So it's like Jack Skeleton. It's like Halloween slash Christmas kind of thing because those are my, those are my two favorite uh, holidays. We don't cel celebrate Halloween that much here, but you can, you know, you can bring your own costume. Oh, no, I'm, I'm okay. That. I don't know. Maybe one day. I don't know. But it's, it's pretty nice. Teach us something nice in Spanish because Spanish is your first language. Um, teach us something nice. We could, I mean, I'm always, just a word or... I'm, always a, I'm always a person that says, you know, spread the love or, you know, I love you and stuff like that. So, you know, I, the word I can say to everybody is that, you know, gracias, te quiero mucho por esta oportunidad. And that means thank you. And I love you guys for giving me this opportunity, not just the organization, but even the fan base for like accepting me, you know, as a foreigner, you know, you guys have, have been nothing but nice to me since I've been here. Thank you so much, Manny. I'm going to wrap course. this up now. <laughs> Let's go practice. That's for sure.